1980, a radio play about the lawyer Rumpole of the Bailey predicted the antics of John and Anne Darwin, the canoe man and his wife, who became famous for what they did here in Seton Carew. I'm still alive, my lord. Still alive. Living in Cricklewood. Now, Horace Rumpole, a timeless character created by the barrister John Ortimer, has been around since the mid-70s, and we don't want to think of him as the actor Leo McCurr, who played him on television right up until 1992. The problem for John Mortimer and the production team is that McCurr was terrified of being typecast, and so he'd play this game with them where he said he'd never play the character again, and then a few years later he'd be enticed back for a big pile of money. This was the situation in 1980 after Thames TV's first two seasons of Rumpole of the Bailey. There was a feature-length TV special in the pipeline called Rumpole's Return, but that was it. So Mortimer, a renaissance man and workaholic who could just rattle out scripts at will, wrote 13 half-hour dramas for BBC Radio 4 under the title Rumpole, The Splendours and Miseries of an old Bailey hack. In the scripts, Rumpole is described as short and fat, but he's actually played by 70-year-old Morris Denham, who is thin and bird-like. Denham is rather fussy in the role. He's competent, but he doesn't have the Australian cheekiness of McCann. Episode 12 is called Rumpole and the Perils of the Sea. It's also known in print, in the short story version, as Rumpole of the Boat People, which is a play on words to do with the Vietnamese refugees at the time, but that's not important now. It's the story of an amateur sailing community in the fictional town of Shenston-on-Sea in Norfolk. Rumpole is defending a woman in a murder trial. According to the prosecution, she shoved her portly husband, Barney, into the sea in order to claim his life insurance money. However, there's a twist, which isn't hard to see coming, to be honest. Is your name Barney Bateman? It's an odd thing about the oath. It sometimes even persuades people to tell the truth. Yes. I'm Barney Bateman. <sighs> Silence! My lord, you can't go on trying Jackie for murder. You see, there's no corpse. I'm still alive, my lord. Still alive. Barney isn't actually dead. It was all a plot. He slimmed down, dyed his hair, grown a beard, changed his name, and remarried the woman. OK, the details aren't exact, but that's uncannily like what the Darwins did here on the edge of Hartlepool in North East England. I'm going to fake my death so you will be able to claim life insurance. What in God's name do you think it would do to our family to actually think you were dead? John Darwin was slim all along at this time when he bought the canoe, but fundamentally it's the same swindle. In 2000, 2002, John Darwin disappeared whilst in a canoe off the coast of County Durham. He was later declared missing, presumed dead. But in reality, John was living a secret, in a secret bedsit next door to their family home after faking his own death with the help of his wife, Anne, to pay off huge debts using life insurance. Uh, now, the lives were exposed in 2007 when a random photo surfaced to the couple in an estate agent in Panama uh, and is now remembered as one of the, notorious, one of the most notorious cases of fraud in history. How's that for seeing into the future? Anyway, that's all from Seaton Canoe. Wink, wink. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. Or just press them gently if you feel like it.